Gear of the Year. Yes. Favorite episode? This, this is right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's the only right answer. So. It's the only one I'm <laughs> consistently on. And so. this year we're doing it in person, which is cool. I was, yep. I, I was listening to last year's before we started, just so I can remember. And we, it, I was also just remembering last year was like the worst winter because yeah. it was, I mean, well, it's really cold now, but it was exceptionally cold last year and everything was closed. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. It feel, feels very different. Yeah. It's I mean, it's, it definitely has a better vibe in person. I, it was great to have Patrick on uh, last year as well. But, yeah, totally. But, no, uh, that wasn't last year. That, that wasn't? Was before. Oh, yeah. man. It was just you and so I last nothing year. Nothing happened last yeah, year. Yeah, no, last year was no very memory. quiet. But uh, I feel like this this has been a great year for all the things that we're going to yeah. cover. You've got your phone, and I, I don't have my list in front of me, so you're going to help me I am going to. By yes, the way, host, I will be in charge of the structure of this episode. Any, anybody listening that doesn't recognize the, the voice of our host here, this, oh, is, yeah. this is Jordan Drake. Hey, Jordan uh, Drake from DP Review TV. Exactly. So you've probably seen his camera reviews. Uh, they cover literally every single piece of camera gear, much more than I get around to. So all the lenses too. And uh, yeah, it's fun because I can bring some different systems to these, right? Like you exactly. typically look at stuff that's going to work for your personal workflow. Yeah, totally. I have a narrower perspective of like people that shoot like I do, yeah. whereas you're covering like, here's everything for everyone. Yeah. Um, so that's great. And, uh, but completely unrelated to that. Yeah. The first category that we're going to talk about oh, is tech product. Thanks for keeping us on track. So that's, I, w- I, which is, I think, yeah, well, obviously it's a pretty important one because I cover a lot of tech stuff, but I never know how to like define that category. I, I think I used to say computer or something. I used to have like computer, yeah. best computer, best phone. Yeah, we None used of to... it really makes sense because it's like, it's always going to be the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> and then a uh, tech product, I don't know. So the thing is last year I was listening to what we picked and we both picked computers. Mm-hmm. You picked the iMac, iMac and I picked the M1 Max. Yes. Um, uh, let's see how different it is this year. Okay. <laughs> I'll go for, I'll go first. All okay, right. So mine, mine's the M2 MacBook Air, which, uh, it's especially like a recent tr- qualifier for me. Cause, uh, when I first reviewed it, I didn't end up using it that much more after the review. Like I spent those few weeks on it and great experience. I really enjoyed it. And then I was like, well, you know what? I just need my computer to be as fast as possible. I need to hit export and it's done yeah. quickly. Um, and the M2 can handle it, but it's not as fast as the M1 Max. But just recently, I was traveling. I made a video about this, is that we were, uh, we were in Thailand and had very tight weight restrictions. Mm-hmm. So I had to like really slim down my bag. And as I was putting things in it, that's when I, re- I really realized, I'm like, wow, the laptop is the heaviest. Yeah. It's heavier than my com- uh, cameras. It's like, it's massive. So um, bringing the smaller one um, really uh, obviously, obviously helped with that. Uh, but it also handled everything. Like the only moments that the M2, which again, this is the M2 Air. This is the like kind of baseline processor right now. The only things it couldn't really handle is like the exports were a little like I'd kind of wait for them mm-hmm. a little bit. But it was still better than my old like Mac, uh, like 16 inch like Intel. Intel computer. Yeah. I mean, literally it was still faster than a computer that I spent $6,000 on like three years, however many years ago that the uh, switch happened like yeah. three years ago. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's still a revelation to me. And I just feel like every opportunity I have to remind us like, wow, this M1, M2 situation is pretty cool. I'm going to take that opportunity. So yeah, I don't, if, if anybody's still like on the fence about it, um, you don't, the good, the really good news, the, the way that I kind of want to keep driving home all of the reviews of uh, the modern Max is that it it means you can bring your price down yep. of of like how much do you need to spend to get the performance of whatever it is you do mm. that price has dropped significantly. So even though the prices like these are still expensive computers, you can buy a cheaper one and do right. <laughs> everything. Yeah, totally. So I, and I mean that kind of rolls right into mine as well um, because my pick, even though it came out the previous year, I started traveling again. The world's opening up. I needed a laptop. I'm not going to touch an Intel Mac and edit a 4K timeline ever again. Those days are behind me. So it's like, look, I'm traveling. I'm just, just get me a MacBook Pro base unit. And then I was really waffling. Do I want the 16 or the 14? And uh, I went with the 14 base. Nice. So nice. just like, I didn't know you did that. Yeah, That's cool. So just cheapest I could possibly get. And everything I throw at this, like I was cutting raw video the other day and this mm. base thing, it's just cutting through it yep. like butter. There's Canon raw files that used to just drag everything down. And I do have my M1, um, iMac at home still. 
Uh, and there are occasionally times where I'm doing like, you know, our best and worst was like an hour and a half timeline of, you know, multiple cameras and stuff like that, where it would chug. And I can't get this 14 inch MacBook Pro right. to break a sweat with anything that I throw at it. So it's exactly what you're talking about. I used to always go in every previous laptop I've had. I've just been like, here's five thousand dollars just turn this right. into as much computer as i possibly can yeah and, and then still with this, even... I'm, I'm like i feel like i'm cheaping out and i still haven't hit the wall with and, it and when we spent all that extra money it wasn't enough it, yeah. like, it, we still were not getting the results that we wanted i did start finding the wall recently um i was doing i was working on an edit in resolve which like I, i've talked about this a lot on twitter and elsewhere but i don't get to use resolve as much as i want because mm -hmm. the cutting experience sucks yeah. to me final cut is the best way to put footage in a sequence. Yep. And I just, I understand how it works in Resolve and it's just worse. Anyway, but the, the mastering experience is incredible. Like yeah. stabilization actually works. Mm -hmm. That was a bit of a revelation. Like in Final Cut, I just don't, no. I don't bother. I don't even it look. Always like, it always looks janky and wobbly no yeah, matter or how it does nothing. It. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, in, in Resolve though, I mean, it, it just like, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's actually totally usable. And also the noise reduction, same thing. Like in Final Cut, it kind of does very little. Yeah. Um, or look completely bad. bogs your timeline down as soon as you apply it totally. for very little result. But, but the results result. in Resolve are per. I mean, yeah, it's a great job. It's yeah, like photo best noise in reduction. class. Yeah, um, but it does still absolutely bog things down. Yeah. So if you're going to run noise reduction on a lot of things, you will max out whatever machine you're using. You're, nothing can run completely smoothly. And the other ones can be an interesting test going forward. Is now that AI is becoming more of a real thing. Mm -hmm those neural engines built into these computers start to matter a little bit more things like stable diffusion running locally. So I don't know, that'll, that'll tie into to some future picks, but, uh, yeah, there, there's kind of more stuff that we are able to like, as, as always, as the capacity of yeah. our processing power grows, we're going to, we're going to fill that. Space. Yeah. They're going to find some way to yeah, yeah, improve that whole editing experience. Yeah. I feel like I need to make one more point about the specifically why I would choose the M2 MacBook Air because the, the M1 Air actually is still great. I mean, if people want to save the money, the actual, that editing experience for photos or videos is still just as good. Yeah. It has not become degraded. The reason the M2 is, has all the value for me, and the reason I, I actually couldn't live with the M1 personally is the the ports i mean yeah. there was they took away the magsafe on it so you would always if you're charging you have to have one power uh plugged in for power then you've only got one port i need to have there's no card reader yeah so often i need a card reader and the drive that it's downloading to and i need power and i have to leave it downloading overnight so those three have to happen when i'm traveling so the m2 having magsafe back and two ports means at night i can plug in a card reader plug in a drive and leave it downloading and it can work yeah so that that was like an essential step forward for me. Yeah, my wife actually grabbed uh, the M1 um, Air as well. Um, and that is something that we're constantly wrestling with. It was like, I think a week before the M2, uh, yeah. which is always the way, but it's, it's like, happens. you know what? We, we need a computer right <laughs> yeah. now, same thing. Um, but that is something we wrestle with. But she's gotten into video editing. And again, it's crazy that a laptop at that price, she's right. just like cutting 4K, 6K. She's doing a lot of open gate and it's totally. like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it also just, I, don't know. I, haven't, I haven't tested yet, but I've got the, the beta for the DaVinci on iPad, so. Oh, yeah. yeah, let me know how that yeah, goes. Yeah, there's going to be stuff to talk about. There's, oh, man, there is there is so much happening. This is the, cra like, I, this I, is, I should have opened with this, actually. This is, 2022 is the craziest year for tech. Like, just, I mean, the list of things that have just, are jumping forward so fast. I feel like there's a few kind of slower years, like when there's the MacBooks were bad and, or mediocre. And uh, you know, I don't know, I had a lot to complain about with all my cameras. Like, they're good, but they all shot 8-bit, yeah. you know. Yeah, oh man, things are moving fast right now. It's I think yeah, like a switch flipped a year ago, and yeah, now we're just careening forward. It's insane. But what's our next topic? Uh, no, host Jordan, let you down already. <laughs> oh, this is a big one, Tyler. That you're gonna have way more opinions than me. Best app. Okay, best app. Uh, so this is this is part of that like um, th that it be, it is really significant right now. Um, I think. There's no way not to say that it's uh, basically GPT-3 in general mm -hmm. and things that follow out from that. So AI, yeah. as it's come together from like the open AI platform. Um, so that means mid-journey, 
I, and I was going to choose between mid journey and chat GPT, right. but I, I couldn't choose. So I decided to go with the underlying technology, yeah. but, um, man, uh, the AI this year, like love it or hate it. It is changing the world v- so quickly. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to remember what we would have even talked about related to that a year ago, no, the, but it no, was all like, was there any, no, the, yeah. I, Dolly two wasn't out. Yeah. There wasn't anything. I mean, so chat G- is there, sorry. Oh, we were so young GPT and naive a year three, ago. The, the tech existed, but we were missing the, there was no platforms for it. Right. So people were starting to experiment with it. They were writing these things that we're talking about now, but they weren't out yet. Yeah. Now they're out and blowing everyone's mind. So yeah. I don't know what, what have you tried with it so far? Like what have you experimented with? Uh, very little. Like I've, I've kind of taken the mindset that it is so new that any information that I put out is going to be outdated basically by the time the video goes together. And I don't have much of a background in it, honestly. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing like, you know, on the photo editing, we've got, <clears throat> sorry, uh, like AI based, you know, replacement, healing tools, all that kind of stuff, which is coming to video. I'm very excited about that. The actual creation of things, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, obviously I pay the bills making things and it's <laughs> yeah, terrifying yeah. and I want to stay on top of it, but uh, I mean, it's hard to not just let this whole episode go down the rabbit hole of I know. AI. Because, because I, I, again, I, I did talk about it in the last episode of the show, but I have not nearly touched it enough because it is, it is such a big topic. And the last episode of this podcast, Chat GP, or yeah, Chat GPT, terrible name, uh, wasn't out yet. So like, we didn't even have that. Have you played with it? No. no. Oh. Oh my, I mean, have you seen like, the, the, have you seen it? Yeah, no, I've obviously. I mean, yeah. I'm just like, it's really incredible. And I, what, what I find strange is um, sort of the lack of excitement around, or not excitement, but interest around it. Because yeah. like non-tech people that I talk to, like kind of normal people, they'll, they'll try something with it and they're like, I don't know. It's like, it's not perfect. Like, it's not that great. Like it's yeah. getting some of the things wrong or it sounds sort of childish and I'm just like, yeah, but can you not see this is about to change the world? Yeah, exactly. We had nothing like this before and it's completely convincing. So, I mean, examples that are happening in our world right away is like, uh, give me five suggestions for YouTube titles for a travel video in Thailand. Yeah. And they're all, they all completely make sense, um, are like optimized, you know, like they make sense for YouTube. And then because this is what I was doing for my last video. And then I also said, okay, those are all good, but make them shorter. Cause I've just found a mm-hmm. few too many words. Then you could say, okay, make them funny. And it is following, it really is following these directions and understanding it. And this is the first version that we've all been able to try. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was kind of fun. Um, Richard Butler, one of the writers for the site, they were like, write me a camera review for the 5d4 in the style of Richard Butler. And he's been writing these for 20, you know, it's got 20 years yeah. of articles to drop and it is uncanny. Really? Oh it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. So, and so an, an interesting aspect of this, again, I can't go down the whole rabbit hole, but so with chat GPT, especially is that it actually might be better at some of this more, um, narrow, uh, like uh, kind of in-depth topics mm-hmm. that typically would be harder to find information about because they only exist in like manuals on the internet or like technical documentation. But it is bringing that in just as well as, uh, you know, casual conversations. Right. So it's going to be able to encompass. So some example, I was asking it to like to do some technical definitions of like, What's the difference between you know waveforms that uh, in light and sound? What's the difference between bit depth and uh, bit uh, rate? And you know just like technical questions. It's yeah. like th- things that and things that I basically know the answer to. And I'm like these are v- totally valid explanations. And after you ask it to explain it, you can be like, um, I don't really get it. Explain it to me like I'm ten, yeah. and it'll do that. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, it's crazy. This is what we're going to look, this is what we're going to look back on 22. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about a bunch of cameras after this. Yeah. This AI stuff is what 2022 will, will be remembered for. Yeah. Well, th- this will be, you know, we had like the internet in the course of our lives, right? This is the thing that probably my kid will look back at as yeah. like, oh yeah, that's the, when everything changed. All I, I'm not sure yet is if it's, is it the, the next internet or is it the iPhone? Right. Like those scales are different and we don't know which one it is. And so that's, that's what I'll have to re-listen to this episode to be like, was it the biggest tech product or was it the redefining of how we 
yeah. communicate and relate to each other. Well, I think you made an interesting point that there doesn't seem to be as much excitement as you'd want, but it's because, like you said, consumers want it perfect immediately and creators are terrified. Yes. And I want to be clear that it's not excitement. I don't want everybody to like it. Right. Cause I do see some people that have that attitude of like they're defenders of, of these AI right. products and they're like, this is great. Can't you all see why this is going to improve our lives? And I'm like, well, I, I'm not convinced it's going to make the world better. It totally could be for the worse, yeah. but it is desperately interesting. It's so hard for me to imagine how people look at it and, and aren't fascinated. This is not something that's going to peter out. Yeah. Right. We know that. Yeah. So anyway, what's yours? <laughs> uh, mine is a, much less world changing. So, um, my favorite camera accessory this year, uh, was the Axun Simo. Did you see oh, this thing? Yeah. Yeah. So I saw people talking about it. Um, it looks really cool. Yeah. I haven't tried it. Yeah. I mean, it's very specifically like it was built for me. What it is, basically what takes it? the HDMI signal out of anything. Uh, we are all using it for cameras, but you could, you know, use it as like a video game recorder or anything like that. Takes an HDMI signal and makes it work with a lightning connection. Right. Or if you've got an, an iPad with a USB-C port, uh, that's, that's included as well. And it's something, it's been available in Android for a while. Like even Sony brought out phones with HDMI inputs on them, which was really interesting. Um, but everybody who's reviewing cameras or, you know, in our world, they're, they're all iPhone users. Uh, so this was a really big deal for me. And so often when I'm out, working trying to demonstrate like how a camera works or I want to grab a quick sample. I'm using an Atomos Ninja. You're mm -hmm. probably doing the same thing. I, I never bought one because I only need it for that. That's yeah. the only thing I need it for really is screen recording. I don't care about capturing raw with an external recorder. Really. Yeah. T to me, I need like, if you need to capture something that relies on a cable, like relies on an external recorder, it makes me not trust it as much. So yeah, totally. Um, so I'll still need that for raw video, yeah. which again, I'm, I don't use very often, but for all of that camera recording stuff to have a super compressed, like it'll let you go anywhere from four megabits per second up to, I think 25 is the cap. So really tiny yeah. files, yeah. but they're just ready to like drop them online. Like I go do all the screen recordings and I can airdrop them when I get home mm -hmm. and just have them ready in the timeline. It's such a huge time saver yeah. from pulling out an SSD and giant ProRes files. I think I got to pick one up and they're, pretty affordable too. I mean, compared They're to like a, 160 bucks us. Oh, and I do yeah, have yeah. like some issues, like the build quality on it's not very good. It looks pretty plasticky. Uh, it definitely is. And like to tighten the tension, you need to use an Allen key, stuff like that. That feels very version one. Mm -hmm. But the reason I picked it for best app is actually the monitoring app and everything is really well thought out. Like it has, you know, your waveforms, false colors, um, even anamorphic D squeeze. So if you're using it as a monitor, it's, mm -hmm comparing it to like a bunch of those cheap monitors out there, your phone's going to be way brighter and you got all the assist tools. I was also curious about using it. I mean, yes to all of that. I was also curious about using it for um, having quick post social media stuff potentially yeah. as well. So it's like you've got, you know, you capture a version of it on the phone and it's like ready to go. Yeah. But obviously you can grade it, right? Because it's there's nothing that's high quality. No, it's it's low data rate. It's yeah. 1080 only, you know. So you uh, have to bake in whatever look you want. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you, and you'd have to toggle too between clean and like your camera overlay settings depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Right. But you can also use it, like it just drops those video files right into your camera's roll, which is really handy. I got to grab one of these like right away. You're, you're selling me. Uh, and then also you can use it for streaming too, which is pretty sweet. Like if you're out on location. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Uh, so low data rate again. Yeah. But uh, my wife has been doing some interesting stuff with the camera store TV where they're going out with professional photographers and running an HDMI feed from their camera mm -hmm. and showing how they work when they're out in the field. And their setup is absolutely insane. With this, just run a decent camera, plug it on, you know, leave the phone on top of it, and send the stream key out. I like that a lot. It's pretty elegant. That's super nice. Um, yeah, I, when I first saw it, the plasticness yes. made me just not pay attention. I didn't watch any of the reviews. I saw some thumbnails, and I was like, I don't know, this looks like Amazon junk. Yeah. Turns out, <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing good things. So. Yeah, like the app and the actual process works great. But yeah, yeah it, the design of the unit itself, like you can't charge while you're using it, even though you're using like big NPL batteries. Right. So I'm sure there's going to be a version two where they could even just do like wireless charging built into the mount would make it professionalize it a little bit. Yeah. I'll pay 
twice, three times the price for basically the same functionality and something that works good. Name it again, Acusun. Acusun Simo. It's a terrible Acusun name. Simo. Yeah. Okay. We're Very only memorable. giving awards to things with terrible <laughs> names this year. Okay, so speaking of what's our next uh, award oh. coming up? Photo camera. Oh. You actually got to yeah. play with a few different makes this year. Yes, so last year that was the problem. I was like, oh, I didn't get to try much. You so. did like Canons and Sonys. Yeah, so I, 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 of course it was the R5 last year, which mm -hmm. is still what I'm shooting kind of full time. For photography, I'm still very happy with Love it. Love that camera. I finally picked up my first um, RF lens because like, uh, I've been shooting Native. all EF, yeah. And it was the one I told you you were going to get like three years I mean, ago when it was launched. So it's the 15 to 35, yes. 2.8. It's amazing. I did start to realize, now I understand why people complain about the stabilization so much. Like in video, the oh. wobbly corners, it's worse than I thought anybody yep. even, like people should have warned me more. The corner warping, it's crazy. It's unusable. It's yeah. so bad. Yeah. But for photos, it's perfect. Like literally kind of perfect for photos. Well, and Canons have not had great wide, ultra wide angle zooms. I mean, that's always been one of bad. their big Achilles heels. And uh, now they have one of, if not maybe the best ultra wide zoom. No, it's amazing. Um, but that's not my pick. Oh. Um, I, I'm not gonna pick R5 again. Uh, there are like, there are other great cameras. You know, I've, I talked about Fuji's a lot this year. I tested quite a few of them and it was, I was really happy with a bunch. But I've just, I've got to give it to the Sony A7R5. Yeah. I mean, it, because it just kind of is the new best camera. I mean, it, it, I think it is better than the R5, uh, you know, because it's newer, so they've been able to move forward. Yeah. Um, that AI autofocus. Yeah. With uh, people, it's is incredibly brilliant. accurate. Yeah. Uh, Chris is off shooting some sports right now, I think, right. with it. I didn't end up doing the review of it. Uh, just kind of didn't have time at the moment it was released. I'd still like to spend some time with it. But I mean, yeah. A7R5 is, the, it's just, it's just the best camera yep. right now. I mean, I guess the A1 in some ways still Yeah, I mean, does if, you, if you need the fast stuff. burst rate, the electronic shutter is, you know, a spoiler for my review that's coming up, utterly unusable on the A7R5. Oh, that oh, sensor yeah, right. was never made to read out sure, yeah. fast. And also for, for video, like if hybrid is really essential yeah. for you, it's a very good video camera, but not the best. There's right. some weird compromise with every record mode on right, that camera. Exactly. Uh, so... Um, you know, but, and then also, I mean, I could just give it the award for the flip screen, like, yeah. you know, which it, they're not the first to do it, but this is what fl every flip screen oh. needs to be. I was just out shooting in like bitter, bitter cold with it the other day, using it as a video camera. And I mean, I really love Panasonic's implementation. I've been saying for years, like that is where uh, it's at. Which is on the S GH6 and the S1H oh, are yeah, currently yeah, the only okay. two with that, uh, where you can pull it out from the camera body. Yeah. But the problem is if you're wearing gloves, like it's kind of a tight, tiny, the Sony, you just like pull back. Mm -hmm. It feels completely natural and yeah, it works incredibly well. I just wish the quality of that display was actually a little bit better, more in line with like your R5. Right. Uh, but yeah, I loved using that, but I haven't shot that many stills with it. I mean, at this point, traditional flip screens are just sort of dead to me. Like yeah. not, they're not, obviously they're not dead because I still have to use them for a while. I'm half, all my cameras still have it, but comparing it to like the X-D5 I was, I was just using as well, has a, diff a different implementation. You can't have it front yeah, the facing. Two-way tilt. The two ways are perfect for photography. Yeah, it is the best solution for if you're mostly a photographer and you're not taking self. If you don't have to record yourself, the XT5 screen is like that's it. That is a hundred percent right. And like the, the tilt upwards, if you want to be in Hasselblad position, so you're looking down, is totally. Uh, parallel, yeah, right. It's, like it, it goes, sits flat. There's a lot that only tilts up a little exactly. bit, which is far less useful. Yeah. So, and then you're always parallel to your lens too, which is my big, well, everyone's big problem with having a screen sitting out to the side. But I mean. also, just disclaim a little bit that okay, we're talking about photo camera of the year. I mean, th we're slicing the pie more and more narrowly for photography lately because, like, I just don't know how much, yeah, how much better can they get? I mean, they're just so excellent. Um, it is it is really easy to get a good photo camera these days. Well, Sony is so frustrating to me because I feel like they always, they come up with this great idea and they're like, put it on the next camera. What is the next camera? Oh, it's a camera that makes absolutely no sense with this new feature, perfect. Like they chose to roll out this wonderful video centric LCD screen on it with what I would argue is probably their worst full frame video camera. Right. Um, you know, the, and then they put in all the firmware features. Like I really, did you use the focus map? 
at all? Uh, I saw it. And yeah, it I actually really love that for oh, product looks, shot. So looks, I think it's great. It looks dumb to me, but I, um, maybe I just don't yeah, get it. Try it out sometime. Not, <laughs> okay, with the, okay. not while you're rolling, but yep. when you're setting up a shot, it's great. But yeah, that's in there, but they still haven't added it to like the A7S III, which mm -hmm. is supposedly like their hybrid. It, it, it's just weird. Uh, they're kind of baffling that way. But I kind of went the same as you when I'm looking at best photo cameras. I immediately go to like, what are the ones that I don't want to shoot video on that much? Right. Uh, so I actually had as my like two contenders, the X-T5 and the A7R5, same right. as you. Um, Cause I did get more time to shoot photos with the X-T5. So why would you I, say X-T5 instead of X-H2? Uh, because, well, those would be in my candidates for hybrid. You know, it's a lot less compromises sure. for photo there. But the experience of taking pictures, like I do love having physical dials with mirrorless cameras where the battery life's not great. I love being able to look at the camera while it's powered down and I can see all of my settings, right. which I love. Um, and like you mentioned, that two-way tilt is fantastic for photography. Like I really love shooting that way. Can we also just talk about the crazy moment that the Fuji X100 series is having right now yeah. like normal people are coming up to me and be like can you tell me more about this film this film digital camera that fuji makes or I, I don't know what this public perception of it is i don't know how it started trending but I, it must be tiktok mm -hmm. but normal people just got into the idea of like oh there's this retro looking fuji which then i realized is the first video we ever did to, together was it, yeah, the first 11 X1, years ago, 12 God, years ago, 12 years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was the first X 100 and looks identical. <laughs> and, and it was always this niche camera that only like the people in the know knew about. Right. And I love that camera. Yeah. Uh, some of my favorite pictures have been taken with it, but yeah, now there's this widespread, you know, knowledge of it. And that means no one's ever going to get an X 100. Yeah. Ever I, well, I mean, I heard they just stopped taking orders for the X 100. Yeah, they're like, we're never going to meet orders, which I hope means they have got the new sense. I am going to get on top of that. Like X 100 six yeah, whatever, whatever it is. they call I it. I mean, I'm just, I need that. Yeah. Cause like that sensor, well, I actually, I hope it's the stack sensor. I know it won't be, it's yeah. going to be, yeah, it's going to be the 40. Anyway, I still want the stack sensor, but, but you got to leave because I want, so I want, it's not as oh, right, yeah. necessary. Oh, right. It's be cool. Cause it's also going to be like the perfect point and shoot video camera having the built in ND. Yep. I mean, that, uh, I'm going to have that with me everywhere. Well, the X100V, that's one of the few compact cameras where I shot the whole episode on that. And I actually oh, okay. didn't, you have a lot of dongles hanging out the side to monitor your audio and stuff. Yeah. But it's a great video camera. So oh, yeah. I would expect similar things. But yeah, I guarantee you it's going to be that 40 megapixel sensor. Yeah, that just yeah. makes sense for them. But it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And maybe like the hinge design, the two-way... I'm going to be all over it. Uh, so the, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like ready for it. What's our next, what's our next thing? Next one is ahead? hybrid cameras, oh, right. which we've kind of rolled into a little bit. Yeah. Uh, man, good year for cameras. Yeah. Just, there's so much. So last year, uh, my pick was the A7 IV. Okay. That and tracks. What, and mine was, was the Z9. Yours? Okay. Right. The Nikon. And uh, what is it this year? This year, I'm going to go with the X-H2S. I, I mean, duh. Love filming <laughs> yeah, yeah, with that camera. Like, and it's a great photo camera as well. Like, it really is. I don't know if it's a better photo camera or a video camera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm more excited about the video side of things. But uh, because I've always loved the Fujifilm image, I just felt like they haven't been quite there with the features yeah. yet. And now they totally are. And the stacked sensors change everything. Like... I've always said, you know, stack sensors are great for high frame rate or minimizing rolling shutter, but they're like, no, it reads out so fast. We can read it out in 14 bit and actually give you more dynamic range right. because the sensor is so quick. And this is, yeah, the first time we've seen like image quality bumps because of that. That's the thing. I didn't understand that I was going to get more dynamic range before I started shooting it. Like I, I was in the briefings and like they told me all about how great it's going to be. And then actually using it, I was like, what, uh, why does this look so good? Yeah. And then even shooting in the film emulation profiles with DR boost up to 400, I was like, oh, this just looks like graded yeah. log footage. Yeah. Like it's all the dynamic range is... is it, it feels like, you know, we keep talking about the full frame cameras and how good the log files are coming off those. It feels like that. But yeah, APS-C, that doesn't have the limitations of most of those full frames, you yeah. know? You don't have those rolling shutter issues. You get the high frame rate on it. Yeah, and the the open gate has also just been... Yeah. I mean, so um, I, I did. I talked about it quite a bit in my GH6 video, and I wanted to actually start talking about it all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt camera. like... and um, But I feel like uh, the YouTube community has kind of picked up on it in general. Like, I feel like I've seen more and more people mentioning it 
all the time. And I'm really glad because it's just, that's just got to be the next it makes expected so, feature so that everybody has. And it may, it, because the sensors were so slow before, it makes sense. It scans top to bottom. You lop the top and bottom off. You can make it read out, mm -hmm. you know, full width. But now that the sensors are getting faster, there's no excuse to not have that ability. And I think it's because so many creators are doing the same thing that we both are, you know, where we're shooting something and we need to repurpose it for 16 by nine and vertical. Um, and I don't want to shoot it twice every time. You know, I don't want to flip a camera around on a ball head where the fully articulating screen is now covered by the center post of your tripod. It's yep. a nightmare. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I think we're all realizing it at the same point. We need this feature and there's no excuses for it. So now hopefully Sony and Canon, I mean, they're just not they're even, the holdouts, it seems like right? they're not even thinking about it. I'll, I, I think there'll be another full release cycle yeah, I away. Think, I'm, and, I'm not expecting it soon. And they're both really staggering the lines. They're the ones who are doing the FX line for Sony and the C series, like the R5C for Canon. I bet they're going to keep it restricted to those series, right. which would be annoying. So let's, I guess while we're on hybrids, I, I want to take a moment to diss my camera <laughs> a little bit. So, you know, R5 was one of my picks last year. And I just shot with it a lot on this trip in Thailand. It was kind of my main video at the X-T5. But since I was testing that, I didn't want to lean too heavily on it. And uh, I used the R5 a lot for both video and photo. Video is just like, here's the, the, the biggest problem is C-Log3. Yep. I've complained about it over and over. I'm going to keep complaining. It's, it's, base, it's barely log. Like yep. it is, it's just like a flattened norm, 709 image. It's not helpful in any way and the result of that is like if you expose it correctly it it look it, it looks very pleasing there's kind of there's kind of enough dynamic range more or less but there's no latitude there's no ability yeah. to move that image so if you get your exposure wrong yeah you can't save it up or down i mean because I, I you know it, for a while everything was a little underexposed and i was like why is it all so noisy like it's i thought this was good in low light and i just realized like oh, i'm a little too i'm exposing too low so i started exposing a bit high and all the color just gets sucked out of yep. the, the highlights like skin. Just, I mean, I'm really pale and if I overexpose myself, there's just like no color left in me. I'm, what is, you know, it yep. looks, it looks pretty bad. Yeah. Well, I, I always wrestle with that and you know, they say this is the, you know, maximum dynamic range the video can give you. So, you know, so we're not going to yeah. give you C-Log2 for that reason. But and, I well, always, always struggle to grade. You, if you shoot it in RAW, you can get C-Log2 in Resolve. I played with it a little bit. It doesn't, it's quite noisy in the shadows. It doesn't seem to have all the dynamic range. It's yeah. not enough for me to start doing it. Like it wasn't some revelation where it's yeah. all better. And that makes sense for me as well. But I just find the dynamic range that is there. Like I always wrestle with C log three is, um, yeah. and then like OM log 400. Those are the two camera profiles that I'm constantly battling with. Um, and yeah, then, and I do find it just incredibly annoying as well that their preview, if you, you know, you're shooting the LUT, you can do the view assist, I think mm -hmm. Canon calls mm -hmm. it, where it applies a LUT to you. But yeah, you want to overexpose all that. So you wind up looking at, you know, ghost people on your LCD right. monitor trying to correctly expose. So then you need an external monitor. And like I said, I want a video camera. Even that overexposed, like I'm never, I'm never confident that I exposed it correctly. I never have this feeling of like, I got it. Yeah. Whereas with let's say comparable Sony's, um, a seven S three or a seven four, anything that can shoot 10 bit S log three. Yep. I feel super confident about it. Like it, you just have to get it within the range and yep. it's, it's going to be fully great. You're going to be able to pull it back out. You're going to be able to recover all that detail. You don't have to nail it, you know? Yeah. Well, and I feel like F log two is that same or F log two. Exactly. So now the Fuji's at a lower price point also looks like cinema footage and Panasonic. Yeah, you know? V-Log is my favorite log totally profile. Yeah. I find it so easy. Just drop it in, tiny shift sometimes to and the mids. And now that out. we've got dynamic range boots boost on the GH6. Yeah, yeah you're comparable to an APS-C camera now yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So It's great. It is for it, hybrid I mean, cameras. it's all great. Uh, what's next? Uh, next one is video camera. I'll let you go first because I feel conflicted. Maybe I'll change my mind based on what you say. This one is a really tricky one for me. So I kind of want to flip it based on, you know, I said photo camera. I want to pick the ones that don't do video that well. Um, so I'm going to go with the GH6, mm -hmm. uh, even though, you know, in my own awards, I said for best camera, the X-H2S. And I think as a hybrid, that is a better tool, no question. Um, but the GH6, in order to get that dual 
no, not dual game, whatever they're calling it. Their dual yeah. ISO readout at the same time. The same thing dual an game? Airy does, right. whatever. Sure. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, there's been a real hit to the dynamic range in photo. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can take a hit in dynamic range in photo, but it is like we were doing product shots of black cameras and I always just expose for the highlights. Chris, bump it up when right. you do the thumbnail or whatever. And it's he, bad. he texts me back and he's like, do not ever send me oh. an underexposed GH6 image again. Wow. It is, oh, actually, I, it, it is a big step back. I don't take photos on it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, like, I think I took like one time I took a few, but, uh, for, yeah, I mean for video. Yeah. It's, it's really sweet. But I, yeah, I could be a downer and just harp on the photo. They took away 6K photo, which is a mode I love. But I, it is such a like incredibly intuitive tool. Like it feels like it's built for exactly how I like to shoot. You know, having the waveforms there, the custom LUTs now that accept .cube files. So I don't have to build like custom LUTs in order to monitor everything. We get the open gate recording, uh, the fast sensor readout, which is what's really enabling all the cool stuff I like in video right now. I feel now. like you've been trying to tell me about Panasonic you've been trying to tell all of us about yeah. Panasonic for a while. And you know, it's, it's been challenging because of that autofocus limitation is super frustrating. And it, it is a reason that like the GH6, cause like I still have the review unit. So it's been around my studio and the perfect use case for me that I found is as an overhead camera. Yeah. It's now my, I think this is like the best overhead camera. I don't like, I, I really do. I could recommend it to anybody cause the V log can match to anything else. It has deeper depth of field, so you don't have to worry as much about, like you can be at wide open and everything on your table is still gonna be pretty much in focus. And that open gate in very nearly square format lets you not worry about positioning your hands or the objects on the table as precisely because you can recompose for it. So just shoot a little extra wide and you've got all this information to, to crop and post. Um, so I've suddenly like really found a perfect use for it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and Panasonic's just always been really thoughtful about, they've been very like video forward yeah. for, for so long. I think they've really like, they know where all their sales are. Like I used to work in a camera store. I know people who bought Panasonic's were shooting videos with yeah, them right. pretty much exclusively. So they're really leaning into that. Also, you know, they had their cinema lineup, like the Evo One, the Vericam. I'm hearing nothing. So I almost yeah. feel like maybe they're just going to move everything into hybrid bodies, which I as a huge fan of no, hybrid bodies, I'm fine with that. Oh, but. I'm not a huge fan of hybrid bodies. I'd much rather see, like, I like that they have that box cam, which I haven't used. Yeah. Um, but I want to see more of that, like, take the, take the camera and just, like, shape it like a video camera for me. Well, the nice thing is they've done that with all, like, the... GH5S, after that camera came out, they did the box version, the S1H, then they do the box after that. Yep. So I strongly suspect we're going to get a GH6 box camera and then whatever they wind up doing in the S series right. in the future. Yeah. I mean, I just, will there be an EVA 2? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't That's, think so either. But I, now, I suddenly. Now you want it? No, I kind of want it. I mean, <laughs> probably, I still wouldn't buy it probably, but I, I like Get the idea. EF mount back. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to, to, to mine for video. I mean, I'm going to be incredibly unoriginal and take the same pick that I did last year. And I got to pick C70 again. Mm -hmm. It wasn't released this year. Um, but I did have a chance to use a bunch of the other competitors, which there, there wasn't any. It, it, tell me if I'm wrong. There wasn't any like direct competitor for that like mid range. No, like because no, the uh, red was twenty yeah, twenty one, right? Yeah. Komodo was before yeah. the FX three, FX six, FX yeah. nine. Those are all before. Um, Evil one was a long time a ago. Long time. Uh, ago. What am I not thinking yep. of? Fuji doesn't make one. Um, you know, I mean JVC. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they dropped something so, hot. Um, so yeah, we have. I guess other the other one would have been, the other thing actually in the running would be red because uh, which is out usually out of the realm of what we talk about. Like you guys don't even review. No, we don't, so we don't have a hookup with that. Yeah. I think you should. I was just, cause I've been real, I've been like watching a lot of red stuff lately. And I was like realizing like very few of the like review sites cover it. Yeah. And it's sort of strange. Cause like I would like, to, which Cine D does. Yeah. And what I like about that is that it sets a benchmark. So even if I'm not, even if I'm never going to afford a red, I can be like, okay, so I'm interested in the Fuji X-H2S. How does this compare to the, yeah. the V-Raptor 8K? Yeah. And seeing those side by side is, is helpful. Anyway, 
I th- yeah, I'd love to, but I mean, we do, it looks like we might have a line on doing some area reviews. Oh, okay. So well, there then, you go. There's you know, we're just going to leapfrog the red real completely, and then maybe yeah. they'll talk to totally. us after yeah, that. For we'll sure. see how that goes. I mean, speaking of good years, though, like, whew, the uh, Alexa th- 35. I just want, it, it was like, the, you remember there was that it's gap crazy. when they announced the Alexa, and yeah, then we yeah. had to wait like two years until Drive was released, and we're like, oh, God, this yeah, is yeah, actually yeah. the future. It's the same thing now. We know all the specs look incredible, but it's like, how soon is... You know, Lubeski gonna get one or yeah. Deacons or something, and we can see what that thing's actually capable of. Right, it's gonna be good. Okay, I'm gonna get back to my pick though. Right. Uh, people, <laughs> nobody listening is buying these cameras, <laughs> um, except except maybe. I mean, so it hasn't come out yet, but the S35 V Raptor, the price of that, I mean, it dropped by five thousand dollars. This is actually why I've never, you know, I don't talk about the big reds in these episodes usually. Because it used to be you're going to spend fifty grand, like yeah. thirty to fifty, to kit to outfit out. them to make them functional the, and barely functional. The price has gone yeah. down so much. The V Raptor, like top of the line red right now, fully like ready to go, is like twenty five k, and now the S thirty five one is going to be nineteen point five. Yeah. Um, these are like starting. You know, they're that would be the most. I've never bought a camera that expensive, but it starts to be in the realm of like. Yeah, it's not. It's much more achievable for like a single solo operator. Per, yeah, it's in the uh, range filmmaker. Of like, like the F five, F fifty five used to be like you know your mid range producer cameras a few years ago, and but now they're exactly in that. But you're shooting yeah, no compressed raw, basically. which is totally. still the best way to work. Uh, red setup for that. So that's what I wanted to be my pick, but uh, it won't be because I haven't tried. <laughs> I haven't shot any of them. But okay, so I, I, I do. I want to throw an honorable mention out really yeah, quickly. Go, go for it. I got an R five C. Um, I'm very late to review it, but mm-hmm. I think this is how hybrid cameras should work. Okay. Is two completely separate operating so systems. Log three? Come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One, yeah, so yeah. Fine. I guess I'm only shooting red raw with no, it, no, no. but at I least mean, it's the yeah. better version of red raw. Yeah. That's vaguely editable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just like, I don't love the camera in, you know, that like I do like having image stabilization for photo, but I don't really need it for video because we talked about the Canon wobbles already. So I'm fine with them pulling that mm-hmm. feature off. Um, but yeah, I do think it makes so much more sense instead of trying to jam everything into a system. I have a question. Yes. I didn't test this. Does the 15 to 35 still wobble on the R5C? Like is the wobble mostly from the sensor? Oh, if you disable IBIS, you're pretty good there. Now, so I, it's the, it is mostly the sensor and not the lens stabilization. It, oh yeah. Cause that is a stable. I would have it to is, test yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Cause I've used it with unstabilized primes and all you have is rolling shutter to worry about. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be something I should probably test because I, I won't me something to, now I, there's a reason the review I is won't so see it on my C70 because it's uh, super 35 oh, as right. well. Yeah. So those corners just aren't visible. Got, yeah, there. Yeah. Um, okay. But I got to get to my, okay. why I'm picking the C70 again. Anyway, all those didn't come out, uh, n- no big releases. So it's still like the current good one. That sensor really holds up. There's rumors of putting it in a box camera. And I think, I think they're just going to run with that sensor for a while because it's just, Still so good, such so fantastic. I finally had a chance to really use the FX3, FX6, and well, I touched the FX9, mostly the yeah. 6 and 3, because I hadn't until now. And the A7S3, I was behind on all of those three Sonys, I just hadn't used them. Um, and the conclusion I came to is I was surprised that so many people have gone with the FX3, actually. Mm. I prefer I preferred the A7S3. Me too. I, I, I really liked it a lot. That's what I would pick if I was in the Sony world um, and the, or the FX6 because then it's that's most like the C70 you've got your NDs mm. um, the reasons I definitely still prefer the C70 over the FX6 specifically the NDs aren't as strong mm-hmm. so actually outdoors I can only get down to like F4 in sunlight right. um, has that nice variable ND or sorry like a smooth the electronic ND yeah. a, it, it really cool it's great but it's a lot less strong as yeah. well um, and then the overall uh, usability is very confused. I mean, I had a really hard time getting the all menu the settings system right. is ancient. It's completely outdated. Yeah. And it feels, I don't know what your impression was. I mean, the C70 feels cheap as well. But I really, <laughs> yeah, all body, of those my, cameras in that like $5,000 to $10,000 range, I don't know what's going on there. They all yeah. feel And like, it's a lot of money. Yeah, I it mean, is. P- especially for people that are choosing that camera, it's a big investment, you know? I want it to feel like a quarter as well built as the GH6. Exactly, that's like yeah. 2000 bucks, right? Which now. is why, even after all this time with loving my C70, I'm still craving a red Komodo. Right. Because it's like, it's nice. Yeah. It's a 
premium product, and the C70 is not Your that C70, much. C70 is great on a tripod with oh, no one yeah. touching it. That's where it sings. But the <laughs> results, the around. results, I cannot argue. It's with. a wonderful yeah. sensor on that. It's been great. What's our next category? Uh, podcast, Tyler. Oh right. Okay. So like, yeah, best podcast of the year. Well, you go first. I was saying I'm a little less sure. So let me. Let me hear yours and I'll, I'll give you one Okay, so um, like you were saying, we tend to just, we've hit a wall with how many podcasts we can consume in the average week, so we're not picking up a bunch of new ones. But I did just start listening to, and you must remember this, uh, which is a movie podcast about like old Hollywood scandal things, uh -huh. but it's um, hosted by Ryan Johnson's wife, whose name I just forgot, the director, yeah, Ryan sure. Johnson, who was like a film critic before. She's amazing. Um, and I just finished a series about Polly Platt, who's... This woman who basically had a small role in like all of the important movies from like the late 60s to mid 90s, like mm -hmm. early Wes Anderson, the Peter Bogdanovich films, all that kind of stuff. And she's like basically unknown and right. she's this creative genius. Um, I, was, I just found it absolutely riveting and I got a bunch of episodes to go back. Um, which is great uh, because she's on hiatus right now. It's one of those shows where they'll do like four Seasonal months and almost, then, yeah, right, exactly. Sure. Yeah, they're in that kind of format. Um, but yeah, I cannot, if you're into film history at all, it's the best thing that I've found nice. in a very long time. Well, and actually the, a, a good reason to, to keep going with the podcast thing is because two that you've recommended before I ended up like kind of binging and listening to all of, uh, which were... Uh, uh, I got you in blank, blank check. check and... Last year. Was it Flophouse? No, you got me onto the yeah. Flophouse. Oh, um, the history podcast. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, uh, end of end, the world. <laughs> civilization's dying. Yeah, that one. Yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, go, I listened to a lot of those go too. Go watch last year's episode. Those were good. Um, and then mine just slipped my mind. I just had it. Uh, oh, yeah. All consuming. So it's by two of just the two of the creatives I respect the most. So Noah Kalina is the photographer I've always said is my favorite photographer. Just like I've been following him for like 15 years. His work is incredible. Uh, Adam Lissagor runs a video production company in LA that does just some of the best commercials out there, like just really funny, well executed, beautiful looking, like every detail is taken care of. And they have just like a kind of hanging out, chatting podcast together and just restarted. So that's a good reason to pick it because they, they kind of did a first season, then they're like, we're done with the show. And then they rebooted it. Oh, and nice. I'm like, oh, perfect. Um, just, you know, to super smart guys that do incredible creative work, not talking about creativity. So um, all consuming is a good show. I'm totally going to check that out. Uh, movie. Oh, okay. This is also, uh, I think we had, we had some pretty good movies this year. Yeah. Um, I have a hard time choosing this. I went back and forth a bit. I actually still have, I wrote down two and didn't really pick now. So I'll let you go first. Okay. I want to specify. Maybe you'll pick one of the ones and that'll be my tiebreaker. I realized as I was coming up with this, I haven't been in a movie theater in a year, okay. which is, I used to go multiple times every week. I don't know who I've become. It's deeply upsetting. I'm sorry. Um, so I've got like twin picks. Um, my twin peaks. Twin picks. Mm -hmm. I better enunciate better. Um, the one that you can see quite easily still for hopefully a little bit longer in the theater. Um, I saw the Fablemans, which nice. uh, rules. Yeah. It's, I mean, it is basically built exclusively for me. It's like, what do you most want? Oh, I want like some marital drama and let's make sure that it really emphasizes the power of movies to raise <laughs> the human spirit. It is exactly that. Um, but it's, I thought it was going to be kind of like, you know, a little glowing and maudlin and, you know, uh, it is not at all. It's actually a really well done, brilliantly acted mm -hmm. movie where, yeah, you've got like a guy learning how to love movies in the midst of a difficult situation. And it is, you know, it's a Spielberg autobiography where he changed a couple names and that's about the extent of it. Uh, but it's beautifully shot. I and mean, I went on and on about West Side Story last year, which I yes. think is like one of the most beautiful movies of the last 10 years. I watched it after that. It is it's beautiful. A, it's a very similar aesthetic applied to a drama. Uh, it's a stunning looking movie, super well edited, incredibly funny. Like it's just a very human movie. And I just like grinned like an idiot the whole time I was watching it, awesome. which is what I really want. The other, my obscure, cause I gotta have my art house pick in there. Mm -hmm. Um, is from uh, the woman who directed Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Did you ever see that? I did not. Masterpiece. I never know what you're talking about okay. in your art house picks. So I think it's keep, the most recent movie that was on the big like 100 films. I think it's like number 36. Okay. And it came out two years ago. It's a great movie. Yeah. Made a smaller movie called Petite Maman, which is um, a girl 
goes back to the place her mom grows, grew up mm -hmm. and interacts with her mom at the same age. So it's like a vaguely supernatural thing, um, but you don't know how much is in her head and how much is actually happening. Uh, again, like beautifully shot and not at all, like it's a French movie with supernatural, so you'd expect it to be either like very slow or incredibly gory and terrifying and hits like a really wonderful middle ground. I just found it like very moving. So awesome. I recommend it if, and that's streaming everywhere now. Well, so. I usually watch what you recommend. So check it out. I'll add it to the list. Um, I, I couldn't settle with one after you, I, I thought I'd pick one while you were talking and I just can't cause I really loved these uh, several movies. Give me your three. So i actually have three. So what I just watched Tragically, on a plane, because this is a theater mm -hmm. movie, as I watch Nope, I, I sort of like delayed it because I don't like thrillers or horror movies or scary movies in general. But uh, what really got me is the Hoyt Van Hoytman. Yeah. All the BTS. How so do you say the yeah. Hoyt Van Hoytima? Hoytima? Yeah. And um, I mean, I'll just watch anything he makes now. Like he's he is my favorite cinematographer right now. I, it's just the the this so many of those films are so defining in what I, the aesthetic that I love. Like they're just, they hit it so hard. Um, I, I, yeah, I, so I have to rewatch that on my big TV at home. I, I regret not seeing it in theaters. Um, That's nope, why I still nope haven't great. seen it because I was looking at it on the back of the seat on the airplane as well. I mean, I'm just like, I can't do it. It was still great. It. it was still, it still held up. Okay. Uh, I'll keep moving kind of quickly. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll count them down. So I think I know what number one is. Next will be everything, everywhere, all, all at once. once. It's it's hard to talk about the movie to people that have you seen it? No. It's hard to talk about it to people that haven't seen it because there's just so it is very rich mm -hmm. and you you do have to watch it. I mean, it's it's very unlike so many other films. I actually kind of came away with like I have I it, you know, if I were to talk to somebody else that watched it, I'd have a bunch of things I could critique about it that I'm like, I don't really like how this right. the pacing of this moment or um but it's so original. It's just like you'll, it blows your hair back. It's like, this is what movies are for. Yeah. I, I found just like tonally the trailer on that one. I, like I showed it to Ev. I'm like, we're going to watch this movie. It's, you know, everybody's yeah. raving about it. And she's just like, I, I it's not my vibe. Well, so I've got to like find when I and mentioned, I'm not going to watch it on an airplane. When so. I men mentioned, mentioned it to John, I think I watched it on an airplane too. I mentioned it to John, like who, who edits these videos. Um, I, I think he was like, Oh, is it that Asian superhero movie? <laughs> like, is that, <laughs> is that how it comes across in the trailers? Cause I, I but I guess, right. I mean, it's very I hard. He may be referring to saying <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess <laughs> whatever, that is. but it's like, it's, it's hard to, it's very hard to understand without watching it. So anyway, watch it. And now finally I'll get to my, <laughs> after those two uh, very beautiful films, my top pick is Top Gun. I, I mean, as a theater experience, especially, it's just like, I haven't smiled that much in a theater for a while. Like it was, this was your Fableman's. I just like loved it. It was so fun. Um, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I get these are, and uh, part, part of like what I like about these three picks is they're all like, you should see these all in theaters. They're yeah, not like, like small dramas. This is They're the not... year, like the return of the big Hollywood non-Marvel, like yeah. big Hollywood non-Marvel movies I just, are and coming I, back. It didn't feel like oh, all that's out in theaters is Marvel, which yeah. it has been happening for a little while now. It's like, what, what can we go, like, what is there to watch? Oh, another Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Top Gun is... I have a backstory for missing everything. Wait, so, you didn't watch it? Oh. I, so I was so excited about this, watching the VTS. I was like, this is my kind of movie. They put these cameras in these jets. It's going to be amazing. Yep. I think it's two days after it premieres. My wife takes my kid to go see it. <laughs> right. So now I can't... Who am I going to go with? So, yeah, I still... And I want to see it because they're playing in like the cheap theaters still. So I'm like one evening... Just please I'm just going to go. I know oh. I'm going to... Uh, it's and gonna, it's going to happen. Nobody needs to explain to you why you already know why you're going to like it. Cause of planes are going fast and it planes are zooming and Tom Cruise yeah. is being confident. That sounds yes. great. Co That's yeah. What I confidence want porn. Exactly. Yeah. So do we have any other categories or are we like, no, we've got some categories still. Oh, great. Um, I'm excited about this one. Best game of the year. Oh, you're excited. Cause I'm, I don't have any. Okay. So we've been doing this for Eight and years. you and always I never, don't have I'm like, I don't play video games right, anymore. All right. we that that portion of my life is long since over. Uh, but then this year, I got a Switch. 
because we had a big flight, and I'm just like, I'm going to get one for the kid. And then I'm like, yeah, we got this Switch sitting. Maybe <laughs> no, the kid doesn't need I'm, it. I'm just going to Google, like, best Switch game. You know, I've been out of video games for 15 years. Something, mm-hmm. Nothing has changed, I'm sure. Now I'm curious. So the, it just kept coming up over and over and over. Is like Zelda Breath of the Wild is the greatest adventure game ever made. So, okay, I'll try that, and I have lost. <laughs> I can imagine you wonder why I haven't seen any movies in theaters this year. Right. Like it's, it's, the kids are asleep. I got five minutes. I'm going to go. Yeah. Oh, dude, it is. I, I can't say enough about it. So like, I, I couldn't get lost in it. I would have expected myself to love it. I mean, Ocarina of Time is one of my yeah. all, one of my all Mine times because yeah. I re- that was just that was just one of those like I could not believe the wor- a world could be this realized that it right. could be this expansive. Now looking back on it, compared to Breath of the Wild, it's like yeah. one, it's like one level of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, um, and maybe that that overwhelmingness was too much for me. Right, and I was like, I can't, I can't take this on. I mean, the thing that really caught it for me is I started playing the game and I wasn't very good at it because I was applying video game logic to it. I'm like, oh, I got to go like find a switch to go stand on or like throw this barrel and. My son is like, no, 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 you just need to like spin that rope over. Like it's all physics based and it makes actual intelligent sense instead right. of like video game logic. And I just found like every 15 minutes was something where a switch flips in my brain. And I'm like, right. oh, that makes perfect sense. That's exactly how that would work and should work. Yeah. Uh, and it's just that over and over. Like I don't find it gets repetitive that much. So uh, yeah, that made me like get back into video games single-handedly that's amazing and yeah. now i'm like i'm looking forward to playing the new metroid and i don't know what's happened wow so switch I, i'm gonna be able again, to talk yeah. to other guys at bars about <laughs> things i'm about very switches. excited yeah i'll see top gun too and, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah man it sounds like a great night we're gonna have to once you <laughs> we're gonna have to catch up on things yeah. um i i actually i might have to just opt out of it because mm. ne- the, the holiday season is when i usually play my games it's coming up uh so i just bought stray Okay. So I'm going to play that, which is where you play as a cat. Yep. So I'll just make that my pick because it's the only thing that I started that's like a new game. Um, and I might also play a, uh, God of War Ragnarok, but yep. I may not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. It just feels like a big commitment. I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've heard they, it's hard. They all are at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just some of the stuff that I'm seeing, like I thought were clips from a movie. So it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it looks so I, And I was just in Japan where like every screen you walk by is playing right. God of War stuff and it looks amazing. And I just have a Switch. So now I guess I have to buy a PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how it starts. It's true. I, this is the end of DP Review TV. <laughs> is like he just stopped returning phone calls and he just sat there. I mean, there's there plenty of video games basement. to review out there. Yeah. So I, I think you got a future ahead of And you. I'm missing 15 years too. So that's a big backlog. I got to go back and... Did we make it through everything? Wait, wait, wait. Kind of thing. I, oh, no. I know there's one more. There is one more. I was testing you just now. Okay, perfect. What's your favorite book this year? Oh, actually, I have a good one. That, and I checked and it came out this year. It was in like January. Um, and I've wanted to talk. I, I was like, I don't have a, a place to talk about books, which I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Mm-hmm. So I often am thinking about them and I'll like post one tweet about it. But I just don't. I'm, and this is one that I'm glad I have a moment to talk about because I think it was great. It's called Stolen Focus by Johan Hari. Um, a previous book of his, uh, is just like also one of my strongest recommendations which the title just escaped me anyway. Stolen focus being very relevant to that. The idea, the, the big premise being like, none of us can focus yeah. on anything right now. Like we can all feel it. This isn't just, it's not just the kids. Yeah. Like us adults, people around middle age and, and older, we all have this feeling of, uh, you know, try, try reading a book, like a full book. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly difficult. You know, like our attention spans are, are really shrinking and the, 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 it's, it's thoughtful conversations about what elements of technology have done that and, and why, and without being a sort of Luddite, the, the pitch isn't like, well, so we have to drop it all. Right. Obviously. Yeah. It's, it's, that's not happening. Yeah. Um, and part of the, the conceit of the book and like the premise that he's starting from is he took a, I think a month off of just like no devices and went by himself and, or maybe it's a couple months. And, um, that, I, that's not, I'm not going to do that. That's, right. that's not going to happen. Yeah. But there are things that tech companies are doing to design their products that, um, are really, only focused on like capitalizing on the amount of time that we spend staring at 
really useless shit yeah, yeah. that is not helping us in any way and um and is you know making them money and it, it he has some uh, which they're not coming to mind right now but there's there's recommendations of like here, how could we structure if there was any sort of regulations or kind of rules around how this works that there is room for technological growth and right. and, and and business growth but that it's not at the expense of like everybody getting a bit dumber and i mean it that effect I, I really do believe is real. I think it's more yep. than just, we're not imagining it. No, I, I think people are less curious now. Is um, It's just so much easier to fill the time right now. And I, I think you talked about that book with Dave Mays. Is that yes. right? Yeah. I, and I, and I put that in my queue right, of so like, I definitely want to check that one out for yeah. sure. Um, I've been doing this for, yeah, almost every year I've pulled out a Matt Zoller Sites book. Um, oh, and I'm going to do it I haven't again. followed up on any of your books yet. I do all your movies and podcasts, but not your books. Okay, this is, I mean, this one is a conditional one. Okay. Um, so he does these amazing, they're like recap books. So every, you know, usually for TV shows, every episode he gives you like an essay on it. Right. And it's not like a plot synopsis, like you know, what you typically see on like Vulture or something like yeah. that. And you did Mad Men last year, right? I did, yeah. Right. Uh, which is, I have as watched. I was, so as I was re-watching Mad Men, uh, which was great, highly recommend it. So then he brought out a new one uh, for one of my favorite shows, Deadwood. So it's called The Deadwood Bible. And I was thinking it's just like, oh, great, it's another set of recaps. Uh, and then this giant, it's actually leather bound, looks like a Bible. It's got the red string so you can save your place on it. Um, but it's not just like they have the full recaps for every episode of the show, which if you haven't seen it, it's like a gritty revisionist Western and it's perfect and it's wonderful. Um, but then they have, like, they'll talk to the set, you know, like the second set designer about what it was like to live in the town there for two years. And he gets all these below the line people's opinions, as well as like the big stars and everything like that, to kind of tell the whole story of the three seasons that it was running before it got like unceremoniously dumped by HBO after they already said they'd approve it. There's just so much drama. The creator, David Milch, is just a maniac who lays on the ground and recites the scripts to people for them to run it over to the actors. Uh, there was no actual scripts before they started shooting. It's just like a bizarre, weird circus. And it documents the whole thing with all those episode recaps that I like. Some very moving um, essays as well from people just in terms of like their response to the series. It is Awesome. Uh, the only kicker is it's only available right now still, I think, as a Kickstarter. So I got in there from day one. I couldn't get it up to Canada, so I got one sent to Richard Butler from DP Review, got oh, my cool. copy. I went down and picked it up. But it is wonderful. And as soon as it's available in not Bible form, like paperback, uh, it's like I would watch the show just to have context to enjoy this book. It is that well-written and that fascinating. Took so, up my entire vacation. Great. I hope he writes one about a show I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, like, uh, although I've heard Deadwood is just worth the investment as well. It's oh, it's, it's a show. fascinating show. Yeah, it's it's brutal, but it's beautiful. Yeah, watch that. Nice. Um, I also wanted to add a new category this year because um, it felt like most things we talk about are kind of expensive. I guess except the books and movies. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to add camera accessory. Okay. Some, something like. Smaller, just like what's like a little thing that you found incredibly useful or that you can't live without. I mean, that? the Axoon would be my accessory of the year. That just physical what I object for DP review right, sure. um, on their written reviews. Uh, yeah, to send stuff out to your iPhone, that would definitely be there. You did spring this on me, so I did well. You said it tied into your. Uh, I mean, yeah, so I could just the, say that the again. app and the <laughs> and the device. Well, I mean, I'll go first in case you don't think of anything else. I'll get some. The the one that uh, the one that I've been it's it's not a crazy accessory i just think it's really well executed and i was really happy about it and i just talked about it in a recent video but is a uh, small rig did a set of v-mount batteries oh yeah i saw that and they're awesome and i would not like small rigs reputation comes from making the cheap version of everything related to cameras right like you know the cheapest rigging options the ch cheapest cage cheapest handle that's what they were doing they are moving forward. Like they are pushing themselves and refining what they are as a brand and what they create. So not only have they made better rigging materials, but uh, now they're reaching into electronics and these batteries are the nicest V-mounts I've interacted with. So first of all, they're designed beautifully. So they actually like look good on the back of a camera, which I always thought it was weird that no other battery designers consider that 
this is the largest single thing you can see on most camera rigs. Like oh. it's enormous and there's no, no design consideration on most oh, of them. Oh, it's a big brick. It's yeah. A, it's with a, a brick sticker, tiling. with a sticker, it looks like a warning label yep. on the back. That's like, you know, for a can of pesticide. Just so they know that they can inconvenience you at the airport. That's the <laughs> yeah, exactly. thought behind it. So the small rig looks like a tech product. It looks nice. And they're the new mini V mount, which, uh, so for example, the V Raptors, yep. like the new reds are, are taking this. I don't know how all of a sudden 99, 99 watt hours became half the size. Yeah. I don't know when that happened, but now batteries are half the size and it's awesome. But what, what I like about these, even if you don't need bigger camera batteries, V-Lock batteries in your life, is that they charge through USB-C. So you can just plug That's it into so your, awesome. to any charger. You don't need to carry around these big V-mount bricks. And it doesn't take like a week to No, charge? it charges quickly. Oh. Uh, coming out of like a 20-watt yeah, iPhone like a, a, thing. Yeah, anything with like decent power, charger. it goes really quickly, like 90 minutes or so, and it, oh, and it fills that. up. For the for the 50 watt hour, sorry, which okay. I've been, that's what I was using on this trip. And I was basically just using it as an iPhone charger. I didn't have a V-mount camera, but it has a USB-C out, it has a USB-A out, and they both work at the same time. So, and then it also has a D-tap, of course, so you can like run yep. accessories. And then two of the other little screws that I don't really know what they are, DC, uh, uh, I don't know what they are. The little circle, it's just a circle with a dot in the oh, middle. Oh, that thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, I don't you, know. You gotta have it. But it's got f <laughs> five, it's got five outs and That's it amazing. charges in through, I mean. How much are they? Uh, they're kind of expensive, so three to 400, depending on the size. Yeah, like four for a 90? Yeah, yeah okay. I, sh I should check. Uh, somebody, yeah, uh, okay. don't I quote mean, me on it. that's still reasonable. They're on the higher end. They're right. not like the cheap one. Yeah, yeah no, so no. I think, yeah, 300 for a 90 sounds, I think that's right. Because okay. they, they also have a 150, and so that's why I'm not sure what was what. But um, yeah, so I mean, just it's just everything. I'm just like, this is like so well executed, so. Yeah, I mean, that was the last thing I saw was kind of the, cheap V mounts really coming out, but not seeing anything in the higher end. So yeah, no. it's great. And it sounds very practical and yeah, no, I could totally see scooping up a set of the, the 90. interesting thing about small rig doing it is that it's, um, that's not their reputation, right? You know, well, it's the aperture model, right? They were the, yes. like where it was like right. cheap led lights with needlepoint lighting all over the place. And now you go to a rental house. It's like, Aries and oh, apertures. Man. Yeah, yeah. So I got to like really use all, like the rest of the apertures I haven't used. Because right. I did, I did that talk for them in uh, Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, like the panels, like yeah. the three hundred C's are amazing. Six hundred C's, like yeah. I mean that that Good could stuff. be that could be my pick. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll I'll add uh, it to you. Go but on. I do want to throw out as well. The uh, have you used any of the new DJI gimbals? No. Uh, oh well, yeah. Sorry, the RC three Pro. RS three Pro. Yeah. RS three Pro. Yeah. I did a video about it and I forgot the name. And, yes. And it didn't have like a major headline feature. It's like oh, it kind of collapses itself, but it doesn't work a hundred percent of the time. But the technology they're doing where it learns how you move and the more that you use it, I didn't know it, it does that at so all. Yeah, it, so it's, you can set up custom profiles for it, for your operators. And I thought that was just for camera settings or whatever. But yeah, talking to it, it's like, yeah, if you're in that profile and you use the gimbal, the more you use it, the better it gets. Crazy. So my RS3 is now like flawless uh, when I'm using a GH6 or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, I just think it's like a brilliant use of the technology. And it's now not quite like it's annoying gimbals are inherently annoying things but it's now at the threshold where it's like well it's kind of annoying but mm -hmm. it's good the the advantages are there and it's worth the it investment is so much better than in the past i mean I, I had a lot of people message me like should i upgrade from the rs fuck i can't remember the names rs2 <laughs> rsc2 yeah, yeah sure who yeah knows? the two version and i didn't try that generation in that generation i was using the zion uh crane 2s yeah. um and it was a big improvement for me, like it, uh, quality of life improvements. But man, the, the new Ronin Pro, it's like the, it, now this one-handed gimbal can comfortably mount a V-Raptor. Yep. Like what kind of whatever kit you want. That's the thing is like now the single-handed yeah, gimbal. FX, we did an FX6 on it. No and you can, you can mount the LiDAR f focus on it that I... I've had it for a while, but I haven't tested because I don't have geared. I don't really use geared lenses, so it just like hasn't oh, made sense. Get you a geared lens. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd love, but I'd love to like you know put some anamorphics on it yeah. and have full autofocus with like whatever cinema kit. Yeah. On a one-handed gimbal that can also do wireless transmission. I mean, the list goes on. Like 
Yeah, well, and That's I tried amazing. it with uh, some Nikon AI lenses uh, with fairly short throws, and it was tough because you have to set up like this focus distance mm -hmm. here and then this focus distance here, and it's guessing in between those. It thinks like, oh, it should be oh right, maybe. sure. Because uh, it can't actually tell, read the lens and tell yeah. how far that should be focused. But I was talking to Josh Yo of Make Art Now, and he's like, if you put the time in, it's pretty fantastic with like a proper cinema lens with similar distances between all the settings. And right. that really makes me want to go, yeah, grab like some Vedra lenses or so, like those cheap, yeah, good yeah. cinema lenses. Or like the DZO. Fun. Yeah, the DZOs have a really good reputation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. So I got to try that. Or just this the anamorphics great. keep coming out and they're so much fun. Yeah, so all these those, new anamorphics. I haven't tried any of them. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just sent back the Lawas and it was tough. Oh, there's so much good stuff. This has been, 2022 has been such a good year yeah. that we could talk about this for four more Except hours. But. for noise from animals. <laughs> it's been a terrible year for dogs. Well, hopefully these microphones Phones are, are canceling it. We'll find out. But um, Jordan, thanks again for coming. This was great. I always look forward to it.